Hi, I'm going to do the oboe demonstration. So this is your top joint and your middle joint and your bell. The top joint runs all the way down here where your bridge keys are. No, I'll drop my instrument. <laughs> um, and then the middle joint runs, can you see that? Yes. And then the middle joint runs down into here where the other two bridge keys are. Um, this is just a B flat resonance key. It doesn't really do anything. Makes your B flat not sound bad. Um, uh, this is a reed. Not the one I'm going to play on, but it's a reed. Um, so you can see the opening, which makes it a double reed. Um, and so the two pieces of cane just vibrate together when you blow through them. That's what makes the noise. The call of the oboes. Um, and in case you're curious, this is what a blank looks like. So it's not clipped or anything, and it's not scraped, so it's just covered in a shiny bark. Uh, the next thing I'm gonna do, my chair falling, um, is play a note at mezzo piano and hold it for as long as possible. Um, and then the next thing I'm gonna do is basically like play a chromatic scale, but just in pieces to demonstrate the register. So I'm gonna start with a B flat three, which is the lowest note that we can play, and go up to F sharp four. And then I'm gonna do G four, to A sharp, B flat, five, whichever you prefer. And then I'm gonna do B five to E six. Skip E flat, um, and then I'm gonna do uh, F six to G, um, and technically we can go to G sharp, but it's not like a real note. You just kind of lip the G up until it sounds like a G sharp, and it just kind of sounds like a squeak. Yeah, no one writes it anyway. At least not that I've seen. Um, next I'm going to do uh, B flat 3 as loud and as soft as possible. I'm going to do loud first, just so you know. Fair warning. <laughs> of a boat horn. Uh, now I'm going to play G6 as loud and as soft as possible. And fair warning for those of you wearing headphones, the loud is going to be really obnoxious. We'll see how soft goes.
that's as soft as it's gonna get. It takes a lot of like pressure and air, so playing a high G loud or soft is gonna be hard. And I am not that skilled yet. We're getting there. Anyway, um, next I'm gonna just do some slurred passages. I'm just gonna play a couple of, or er, an excerpt or two. Um, this one is uh, from the Pulcinella Suite. Uh, it has a lot of range jump, so I feel like that it's good to show. Movement two of the Pulcinell Suite. Just clarify, in case you're curious. next thing I'm going to do is demonstrate staccato notes in the low, middle, and high registers. Uh, this is just from Barrett Grand Study number 12. demonstrate a tongued passage. This is just from Barrett number 21. It's just the end of the piece. So next I'm going to talk about the English horn a little bit. It's kind of like a tenor oboe. Uh, so it has a vocal, obviously, which is different than the oboe. Um, and then it has a top joint, a middle joint, and a bell, just like the oboe. Uh, it's longer, obviously. Size difference, entire oboe does not equal entire English horn. Um, stay. <laughs> so one of the big differences about the English horn is there's no B flat key. It can only go down to a low B. Um, you can get English horns with B flats, but you don't really see it in most written music because uh, obviously they're not normally made with them. Um, the fingerings are all the same. Uh, the only kind of weird difference, it's not really a difference, is the half hole on the elbow looks like that. Uh, and the half hole in the English horn. Sorry, the elbow. Uh, it looks like this. So you put your finger in the middle, and then this would be your half hole. Um, and not drop things. Obviously, read differences. So oboe read, English horn read. Very different. It doesn't have cork or anything. Um, my English horn reads kind of look weird, uh, but they work. Um, I'm just gonna play the English horn solo from Roman Carnival, cause yeah, shows a lot of the English horn. As long as my read works.
English one.